Hello, I'm Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Papa's World. Every week we bring in authors, and this week we even bring in illustrators to share with you the books they're putting out, and we hope you read them, talk about them, and have some fun with them. I have returning Kenton Kilgore. Kenton, thank you for coming thank back. Now, thank introduce you for having your me. sidekick, uh, Butch Cassidy, the Sundance Kid. This, here. this is my best friend and co-author Patrick Heibel. And, and Patrick, he is, thank you for coming. He, he is the man that has brought this book to fruition. Great, really. great. Well, Ken, let's before we start, how about you tell us and remind the audience mm -hmm. previous books and just a thirty-second summary of what you're bringing to the table. I'm a I'm an Eastern Shore author here. I've writ I write uh, young adult fantasy and science fiction, and I've, I wrote um, Lost Dogs and Dragon Tamer's Daughters, which you may have heard of or saw on our previous previous show. issue, previous issue, previous episode, and. Um, Patrick here really sort of got the ball rolling for our Wild Place, which is a children's book. It's it's something uh, it's something new for for both of us. Well, that's uh, Patrick. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where you're from, and what you've been doing for the last 35 years. Okay. Um, I'm well of that. Okay. Uh, so I uh, have been a, a teacher, uh, although currently I'm I'm in the process of becoming a librarian because teaching has you know fewer opportunities. Sure. So, I don't, anyway. Um, needed a change. Needed a change, change, yeah. yeah. There, there are different skill sets. So, uh, in the process of being recertified as a teacher, I, had, uh, I was taking a children's literature class, and we had to write a children's book. And I call this a just-so-happens book, uh, where I could have written a children's book, but I just so happened to know an Somebody author. Somebody who's writing one, yeah. And he just so happened to have text on his website saying, boy, I'd love to turn this into a, a, a book. So I thought, well, I could kill some birds with some stones here. Uh, so I co-opted the text and put, took some pictures and, and made, it, uh, made a PowerPoint presentation, uh, printed it out, laminated it, and turned it in. And then I gave the text to him and said, hey, look what I did for you. We did got a so. book. Did yes. you at least get a good grade on that? I got an A. Excellent. All right. Okay. A you, you get half a credit for He that. gets half a credit. Ooh. Again, how about sharing with how you, you guys go back quite a ways yeah. as friends. How about yeah. one of you share with me? Do the talk. Oh, okay. Um, we the illustrators met. have to talk on this show. Okay. Uh, so uh, we met in high school. Okay. Uh, and where was that? Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt High School in Greenbelt, Maryland. Okay. Um, and uh, from one might say different sides of the, of the school, because uh, Eleanor Roosevelt is a magnet school, but right. it also draws from the local population. Mm -hmm. So I was in the tech program, and All right. he was uh, a student who lived in Greenbelt. Became friends. Um, but we became friends through a mutual love of games and all things nerdy, okay. and uh, that has lasted ever since. Yeah. Okay, and we're still going strong here. Yeah, that's right. Now, Ken, how about, let's let you talk now. Okay. Tell us about, and the title of the book is Our Wild Place, right. and it just came out April 20th or 15th? Uh, April last, last week, so okay. be Early April 12th. Right? Early April. Now, yeah. I'll be quiet and tell us sure. about Our Wild Place. Um, this started out as a, as a just sort of like a little short essay I wrote on my blog, kentonkilgore.com, and it was it was sort of inspired by when my daughters were, I have two daughters, when they were younger they used to play in this little patch of woods just over our back fence. Okay. And it occurred to me that a lot of kids these days don't really go outside and play it's as much as TV. as much as we, yeah, sure. we did, you know. I mean, we all, when we were growing up, we'd sort of go run around the neighborhood, right, right. you know. From, different times, from, different ways. Yeah, from dawn till dark, you know. Sure. Uh, and, and I thought there's some value in, in revisiting that idea of, of kids, you know, just sort of like poking around within safe parameters mm -hmm. of, of uh, you know, wild places like that little patch of woods past my fence. So I wrote up this little essay and it sat on my website unnoticed for several years and till Pat brought it to life. Thank heavens for grads. <laughs> yes. Thank heavens. And, Saved uh, all of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, he had the idea of, of uh, taking actual photographs okay. and, and uh, making this thing into a book. Um, and so what we did was, um, you know, we, we took actual photographs, like I mentioned, and then I used so PowerPoint this, this of all things. picture here right. was at one point an actual photograph. It's this. Okay. Okay, here that, we go. That is my back fence where right. my daughters used to now play many years Ken ago. I, this is Ken this Island? Is, yeah, this is Bay City, Ken Island, okay. 
and this is just a little thicket of woods where they would go in and poke around for hours, you know, playing world. pretend games. Yeah, yeah. Okay. playing pretend games and looking for rocks and listening to birds. And one morning I, I came out and there were two deer standing behind that fence. Right yeah, it blew me away. So we we went and uh, we. Pat uh, went to uh, Rock Creek Park, which is by his home. Beautiful spot. Took a bunch of photographs. That, yeah. And um, we, w w I say, you know, we say in, on our Amazon page that I'm the author and, and he's the photographer, but really it was, it was more of a collaborative thing because, you know, he massaged the text, I massaged the images. So it was, it was just sort of like a, a synthesis it was a team of effort. both. Yeah. Yeah, team effort. yeah. You send it to me, I do some stuff. Here, I send it back to you. He does some stuff, <laughs> right. and then goes back and, and forth. Both brains right. were working. On. Yeah. Hey, let me interrupt. Sure. The process. You want? Can mm -hmm. you tell us about the process? You said a picture first. How do we go from for dummies like me? Uh -huh. What was the vehicle used? What was the method used? Picture to this. Well, something, uh, obviously, computer enhanced. Computer, right. Yeah. We, I I took the you know we we took the images and we put them through. PowerPoint and there's a filter on PowerPoint there where you can make it sort of look like a painting, okay. which which we've done throughout these, and then we used um, we used Amazon's Kids Book Creator program uh, to make the the book that that you see in front okay. of you. It's a, it's a, it's available on Amazon as a as a print book and in and as a Kindle as well. I mean, as attractive as the photographs mm -hmm. are. I go back and I like I like this process here. I mean, I, yeah. I mean that's a, to me that's for us uh, nerds you used earlier. I, I science fiction nerds. Oh wow, that's a whole force and all types right. of possibilities, right? There seems to be no boundaries. Go ahead. And that was part of the process, you know. Yeah. Uh, I went out with my digital camera. I'm walking around and uh, I had the I had written out the the edited down part of the essay, and so I knew like oh here's a line about flowers. I need a shot for flowers and. And what would be a good, like, my favorite shot in the entire book is um, There's Only the Day. And I'm like, you know, you, you, the book should not be all just pictures of walking through the trees. Let's do something different. So I laid down on my back and I pointed up okay. to look at the treetops. Okay. And so it's this really neat shot. So I, I made all these pictures and I got done and um, I sent it, you know, I made the thing and I sent it off to him. And I said, but what I really would have liked is some way to turn those pictures into you know, make them look like this. Yeah, a little fantasy world. Yeah, right. so that you could make it look more like a kid's book rather than sure. just someone took some pictures. And so then a few days later, he's like, hey, I found this, I found you know how, how to, to do, do it, it. Yeah. on PowerPoint. Yeah, just goofing okay. around. All so, right, now I interrupt. Go ahead, go ahead. Sure. Give slides, so, please. you know, that's that's the back page. And Beauty, that... Free, free, joy, <coughs> right. just past the fence. Just the fence. And that is a, a picture that uh, my daughter, Allie, took at the um, Butterfly Gardens in Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. um, that's... That's Brookside Gardens. Yeah, and Brookside again, Gardens. All of these, yeah. what I call it, was, but all of these are from actual pictures. Actual pictures. Yes. So there is a picture of mm -hmm. course yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So and that, that would be just a beautiful painting. I don't know how you yeah. guys feel, but yeah. yeah. Um, so what do we have here? So this was a shot. This shot's not in the book, but you know we did we did a, a, a number of, of shots, you know, in different places and and just messed them to see what would look best. And this looks in the like book. A Rock Creek Park to me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is Rock Creek. Yeah. One of the the things, and you know, right now free range parenting and all this is very hot because of the things that are going on, and you know. We get it, arrested now for sending our kids to the playground. Yeah, and yeah. so one of the things that you have to be aware of as parents, I mean, is is like, are you suggesting that we send our children running through the woods unsupervised? Well, within reason. I mean, within here you can see the house is right sure. there. This is somebody's so it's backyard, like, backyard, basically. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. somebody's backyard. Um, you know, so it's it's sort of like, let's let's be real. Now, me right. looking at this has to be summer, oh, very yeah. late late I'm spring, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Um, I think this is fall. Oh, it's fall. Okay, Could strike be? three there. Right? Okay, okay. Remember, yeah, it, 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 it's like it's like yeah, it's like yeah. October. Okay. And this was another one. And that's it's, pretty. I, mean, I, I see Vincent Van Gogh doing yeah, something yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah. So right? you know, again, this one's not in the book, but it was one of those. It was one of those shots that we're just like, all right, let's see how that. Any idea where that was? I'm uh, just amazed. No, I don't know. This, this is this, this is the one. This is the one you were telling us about. Yeah, I I love this shot too. That, that to me, uh, Pat, that me makes yeah. it. Patrick, where were you when you were lying on your back and looking? Uh, at so this is if uh, there's a part of uh, a Rocket Park near my house, uh, which has a Montgomery County, Montgomery County, right. and it has a, a kids area. So there's a big play structure there, and then if you the the path for joggers is right goes right by it. So I walked down the path, 
trying to find very you know natural and trying to stay away from things like you know uh, the playground and all these other things because I wanted, didn't want anybody's kid getting in. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so this is a little copse of trees just past, and I think there's a little bridge where the path goes over part of the, the creek. And uh, I just thought that this was neat because it was mm -hmm. you could get all these treetops all in the same shot. You could sit there and looking at this and write a thousand neat stories, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, this, this is looking probably through the my, trees. Yeah. It's probably my favorite one in the, in the whole book. Great shot, great yeah. shot. And it's a, good, it's a good touch. You know, a lot of the, the book, you know, there's the text of the book, which is very simple. Right. But, you know, when he, he called me up, he says, well, Amazon wants to know what grade level to put this at. And I said, well, you could put it K through three. Uh, because while the text is simple and a kindergartner could read it with their parents, conceptually, it is a launch pad for things like, you know, going out and exploring and, and sure. kid autonomy. But like, you know, a picture like this, you know, it, it's open to any kind of interpretation. Okay. I mean, you can have adults look at this, right, and have a good time with it, right? Yeah. yeah. That's a great so, shot. Oh, yeah. Well, so we have this was this was a shot we used for the end, um, the end of the book where okay. we where we have our, our, our bios and I I just you know I I loved how it turned out. I like the tree gets very mysterious oh, with yeah. all the dark the darkness colors. right yeah, the darkness. Right. What's going to come out of the shadows? <laughs> yeah. We have no idea. Uh, the light and shade. That's right. Yeah. So what if, this is a this is a photograph of what the interior of the book like looks like. So like like Pat was saying, you have this very simple text. You know, up against these, uh, up against these these pictures, and I mean, great start. My sister and I found a wild place just past our backyard, yeah. and you go to the right. the picture, and yeah. all of a sudden, the, the dark area in the back, or the, uh, right, where the shadows kind of fall there. Yeah, and and uh, you know, this is a an example from mm -hmm. you know a little bit later on in the book, um, but yeah, this is just how it uh, that's how it's laid out. That's that's how it looks. The uh, roar of the tiger, a little kitty <laughs> cat, right? That's right. Um, this was this was an image we were going to use for the book. There's a part about frogs in there. Um, this was a this was an actual bunny rabbit that um, again my, my daughter took a picture of at the at the Berkshire Gardens. Is that the name Brooks, of it? Brookside. Brookside Gardens. Brookside. There's this wild bunny jumping around, and okay. she got a picture Just of it. Just jumped right out of the right. trees so, of the foliage. Yeah. So, yeah. He kind of gets lost there. Yeah. <laughs> so we didn't. We used a different one for for the book, and there, there's that cat picture that from from earlier. So never has a little household cat look so threatening, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm a mouse. Right. But that's <laughs> part of the you know the, part of the ideas is, uh, of the book is imagination and exploration. Yeah. And so in that context, you know. Uh, some of the text has, has gotten gone through several different things. There's one where like there's a, a knot in a tree and, and you imagine that it's a fairy hole and okay. and yeah. I think at one point it had incorporated you know sticks as magic wands and, yeah. and the cat as a wild feral animal you know right. so it is it's this launching of you know, just because what's on the page doesn't mean that's where it has to end. No, you can right. And I was I was uh, I was really happy to do this because this is a very positive joyful. Book. I mean, this this book is about about beauty and play and exploration, and I had just gotten done as as you know writing this sort of dark apocalyptic story about dogs, you know, with lost dogs, and it was a really nice change to do something just fun and 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 positive and, and joyful, you know. So well, how about Ken? Let's yeah, let's go back to our wild place. Uh, tell the audience. So, who do you who do you think it should be read to? And what is our wild place? Is it a place in our mind somewhere, or um, it's your daughter's backyard place? You know, Pat. Pat is okay. my you, you my expert. Pat, Pat's my, ex Pat's them, my, my Pat, expert yeah. on on kids' books because okay. I I'm, I I he's usually do things much older. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, but, but uh, he's our guy. So you know, books are instruments, uh, however you want to use them. So if a child wanted to read it by themselves. You, you know, the text is very simple, and so they could read this, uh, you know, kindergarten, you start to read, and this would be fine. I mean, the language of the book isn't very difficult. But the concepts, you know, it's it's some concepts that if, if a parent would like to talk to their oh, kid, yeah, yeah. they could get involved and they talk about, you know, going out and uh, you talk about uh, exploration and going out in the wild. They might even go with the kid. We, we talk about the, the, the dad gets invited by the kids to go with them, and he says, no, but you could if you didn't want them to go out by themselves. Because, you know, as we talked earlier, everybody's connected now. You have, you're always connected in some way with uh, your, your device, and you have computers and cell phones and all these things. And there's nothing wrong with letting those go for a while and going out and exploring nature. Well, the picture, can you go back to the picture where we're looking up? 
Yeah. I mean, I can it. imagine, now I, I raised three kids. Go. I can imagine a, a mom and a child or a dad and a child say, come on, let's, let's go out in a place like this, mm -hmm. go down and line the back. You know how we sort of look at clouds and yeah. argue and discuss, well, that say this, that say this. But a mom and dad reading to a child, that'd be kind of fun on a summer day, right? Just lying back on a blanket, looking up, and what do you see and sharing? You and if right? nothing else, if, if, if the book does nothing else than get uh, a parent and a kid thinking about going out and enjoying nature, then it's done its job. No, right? I think it's terrific. And, and I don't think a, a, a wild place has to be anywhere very far away. I mean, you know, the original ones. It could be in the backyard, ones, yeah. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. Could be, it could be inside your backyard. Sure. You know, it could be just past your backyard. Um, when I was growing up, there was a vacant lot um, behind our townhouses. I lived in, in Phoenix, Arizona back in the 70s. Our, our wild place didn't look anything like this. <laughs> the desert was right, it? Right, yeah. yes. It, it was a vacant lot and it had a bunch of, it was like under construction, so it had these, mm -hmm. these dirt mounds about three feet high and there were dozens of these things. And all the neighborhood kids used to come and ride their bikes on top of these things. You know, BMX sure. was very sure. popular. Kids would like, you know, do jumps and tricks and just ride their bikes and we didn't have snow in Phoenix for some reason <laughs> so um, us boy children would oh, lucky uh, Phoenix this winter that's right, right. Yeah, yeah. Us, us boy children in, instead of having snowball fights we'd have dirt clod fights <laughs> we'd pull dirt off these things and throw at each other and you know it, it, was, it, was, it was just a good time um, so but you know a wild place can be anywhere it can be it can be anything it can be you know just around the corner well, you know, and this, any, all these questions for both of you, uh, I see what my grandchildren are going through, and as an ex-educator, all the testing, all the constant evaluation, there's very little time for just, hey, look, stop, look what's around you, live in the moment, and use your imagination a little bit. I would think a book like this, I mean, you're my, come on, you're my current educator. If I was a parent, I'd say, look, it, uh, again, this is an old man's opinion, didn't mean, right? I mean, we're being evaluated so much. But sure. we're not told, hey, look, stop, take a moment of zen, mm -hmm. and just enjoy the surroundings and enjoy right. the moment. I mean, it looks like this might be the type of book you could do that. Sure, right? and, then, and that's the great thing about what the, even though, again, uh, we keep saying that the text is simple because it, it should be approachable by any anybody, you know, but the, me the message is applicable to anybody. Sure. You know, you take time to go outside and Enjoy that around. moment outside. Again, I always ask, sure. could I ask you to read some of it? Or both of yeah, you, if you like that. it? I mean, sure. whatever, it, you know, maybe you each read a little bit. Sure. And we can have our moment of zen here, <laughs> thinking about it. No, I, I mean, I, again, as a grandparent, I'm delighted, because now I ask my, uh, I have one granddaughter, uh, I have two granddaughters, but my one, Bailey, every time I ask her what she's reading, it's something we're almost on task. It's a biography. It's something where you're, you know, dealing right. with a task. I mean, understanding somebody's like, this is something nice where you just hey. I have to say, uh, my son's five. Okay. And uh, so I read him the story when I got my copies in. And his favorite part was the dedication uh, of the book where we, he dedicated it to his daughters and I dedicated oh, it to right. my son. Of course, yeah. And uh, so he got a real kick out of, uh, out of having his name in the I book. I bet he did. His you name's in print. Yeah. Yeah, so so uh, the book starts. Uh, I show you? Sure. Uh, and for, I, I, use my, I use my daughter's names that they nicknames that they used back then because I'm remembering when they were small. Now they're, they had their, now yeah. they're 21 now they're and 16. School, so. yeah. uh, for Bethy, Allie, Jane, and Thomas, finders of wild places. Okay, let me have it. Let's show that one more time, all right? And uh, and delightful picture here, okay? And I'm going to hold it and hope, uh, I'm sure Mike can get it on. But I, know, I mean, look at anybody would like to have a dedication like that. And anyone who would like to be called a finder of wild yeah, places. Exactly. I mean, even old men like me. Wow, I can go to the wild places. <laughs> sort of like a, 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 an explorer. Sure. Not, not to the unknown. Buck Rogers in the wild places. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and start from the uh, yeah, Should we start at the beginning? Yeah. yeah. So, we won't read them the whole thing. No. Yeah. Just get, uh, get there. My sister and I found a wild place just past our backyard. Show them the picture. I, I could be like, yeah. see, yeah. this is a skill you learn to be a teacher. Because you, you have to hold the book like this and then you have to read sideways. That's there you go. That's why you're doing That's why you make the big bucks. Because you you're the professional here. On the other side of the fence, there's a path through the woods. And you can almost stop with it. The nice thing, it looks like to me, Ken, you guys could, you could read almost one of those a night and say, okay, yeah. let's talk about uh, your path through the woods. Right? And it was fun when, you, when I took the picture, you know, then you had fun, I had fun with the 
cutting things down and, and, and trying to get you know this this is this is an actual path and yeah. the photograph is really cool. And uh, to focus across the path not taken is a my correct. I mean, if you tie so. yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. a good teacher like you would tie yeah, that together. Absolutely, right? Oh yeah, this, uh, the, 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 a good text can, is a jumping oh. off point for anything. Right, yeah. At the end of our path, of the path is our wild place. As, you can, as you can see, it had, it yeah. had rained recently, so everything you know, was kind of If muddy. I'm a Sunday school, do you remember? I'm, I'm, I'm uh, Ahab here looking for symbols, but if I'm a Sunday school teacher, right? At the end of the path is our wild place. Oh, yeah. The end of our life, perhaps. The, I mean, again, right. uh, our wild place is always quiet. Uh -huh. And most of us live in a world now where it's never quiet. Right? Exactly. Well, and that's the idea: is that kind of like this is something different. Yeah. Uh, in the springtime, there are lots of flowers. Okay. Uh, and our wild place is a stream to wade in and splash around when it's hot. Hmm. And this was a fun shot. I had to. <laughs> Rock Creek Park. Yeah, this is Rock Creek Park. In order to take this uh, picture, so I'm. A, I had Where to go, are you? Yeah. Yeah, I had to go down the bank, and there's like a, one, a little bit of cropping. I'm standing on about a ledge that big. Two, yeah, two inches of dirt, and my son is behind me, going like, "Daddy, come back, Daddy, come back!" <laughs> As I'm leaning over to take this picture, it's like, well, I'm thinking Butch casting the Sundance Kid here right. on the ledge, getting ready to go. So uh, I went into a little bit of a wild place, and uh, my my pants got all dirty because I had to climb back up again. As as <laughs> as. Uh, it was an adventure just making the book. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 That's pretty good. So. Well, I mean, that's excellent. Now, let's take a little minute and sure. talk about where we can get it, and how we can get it, and, who, and remind everybody who we think it's for again. It's on, uh, it's on Amazon.com. You can get it in print uh, for $9.99. $9 and it's also in, available in Kindle uh, for $2.99, um, which. I never would have thought of putting a children's picture book on Kindle, but actually, uh, lots of kids, you know, lots of lots of young children are already, you know, they have like little tablets and yeah. things like that, and and they read, you know, you can get Dr. Seuss on, on Kindle, and they're they're reading those, you know, so it's available on Kindle for two ninety nine. I mean, it's the era of digital natives. Oh, it's great, isn't yeah. it? So. And our children, and okay, well, my children, my grandchildren. I mean, uh, my delivery of a book like that is in exact form, a book form. Right. They're not afraid to read it off a computer exactly. or off a Kindle or something like that, and it doesn't end. Yeah. Now, let me ask you guys, sure. where are you headed next? I can see a lot of Rock <laughs> Creek Park. For, or what do you think? Well, I can see this team is going to stay we, together we, a while. Oh, we've been collaborating on a lot of stuff for okay. we'll talk, years and years and years. We'll um, we, we've run a gaming website. Uh, we've been doing that for like 16 years now. Yeah, is that uh, is that oh, now? Oh, that, that's been going on for the last well, 16 years. That, we've been doing. How do we get? To we, that? I don't know that. I don't know oh. that most people are into it. We we're uh, we're fans of a of a science fiction war game, war game okay. called Warhammer 40,000, right. and we've had a, a site about that that we've been doing together for 16 years for. Uh, and and you know on the and, internet and, a website that's been going stuff. on for 16 this is years. Fun stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, just that's just a hobby. Fun yeah. uh, we've collaborated on uh, on. Other stuff before Pat was one of the uh, beta readers for Lost Dogs. Okay. Um, you know, we we've, we've uh, he's he's helping me out with revisions to Dragon Tamer's Daughters. We've been, you, you know, I'll come up with an idea, and he, he makes it off me. Right, it off you know, each other. and 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 he like. Cuts off the weird parts, and you know, <laughs> makes no. Let me let me tell you how you really want to do this. Are you doing this through email? Is this oh how yeah, you do this uh, email, yeah, face email face to face. face, -face. Okay. Yeah, variety. Okay. You know, he's he's been my 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 unofficial editor forever on on, on so stuff. So is there something in the planning stages or not? Uh, I mean, do you have are you, are you for me or uh, both of you or one of you? He's writing a book. Right. Okay. Well, my my next book is is going to be called In Lonely Lands, and we're already bouncing ideas, ideas. off of like okay. you know yeah. what what, what should, to do with what that, what should be like. in it. You know, he's giving me all kinds of advice on on the young adult market and and what you know what uh, kids like to read because you know he he's right there. You know, with the kids every he day. He knows what they're reading. He knows yeah. what they're reading. Yeah. You know, this is this is my my guru here. This is my right hand guy. Well, you know what? I, I still this is terrible, but uh, Ferdinand the Bull. Mm -hmm. Okay, Joseph had a little overcoat. I don't know if you're familiar with that. A wonderful Jewish folk tale. You, you can always make something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. But I find as an adult, the books I read my children, I go back to my. my I secretly go up in my little quiet place. It's not very wild, guys. It's just quiet. <laughs> it's just quiet. And I read Fer Ferdinand the Bull, which I, I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And Joseph had an overcoat. Uh, 
where do you think? I mean, where are our kids? People always say to me, Fred, they're not reading anymore. They don't read the papers. They don't tell me. Are they? What are kids? What are kids reading now? Well, for instance, my son is going to turn five in a month, and uh, we have Fred in the Bold, but we have it as an audio book. Okay. So he gets a, you get the book and get a CD. He puts it in the CD player, and then he can listen along as the the CD reads to it. Ferdinand's not his favorite. He likes like Curious George and things, but okay, he's fine. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll give him time. Um, you know, the, the myth that everybody would have you believe is that as students who are growing up with technology get older, that that books are not going to be important, um, and that they're all going to be in, it'll, it's technology, technology, yeah, technology. Right, right. And the and the reality is is that no, um, at some point, I mean, yeah, if you let your child play video games twenty four seven. You're going to have a person, but but the the reality is that they need to, they want they even want to vary their stimulus, and so they want books to have because they want that break from the things that they're doing. I mean, yes, there are student there are kids who will play video games until they drop, but sure. you know they want books and in their books hands. Books are still alive. They're still alive having, and okay. they're still valid. Well, okay. you know, I think I think a book. I mean, this is just. This is just a delivery method. It's just paper, yeah. you know. It's, but you know, a book doesn't have to be paper. It can be electronic. It can be audio, right? Screen. Yeah, it can. Be screen, right. yeah, it, can it can be on a screen. Okay. It can be. It can be. You know, a, a recording that that you know someone reads it to them. You know, it's. I don't think the delivery method is as important as what you do with it. Yeah, sure. the content. And that's what's happening in education now. The big movement is to take books and texts and classic books that we've all read. And try and do things with them in new and different ways. Okay. Well, guys, about time to wind up. How about one okay. more time? Remind us the title of the book and okay. how we get it. So it's Our Wild Place uh, by me, Kenton Kilgore, and Patrick Eibel. And it's on Amazon um, in, in print and, and for Kindle. Um, you can just find it by you know using their search engine. And I think the uh, I love the way you've done the again. I see a lot of Van Gogh in some of the stuff <laughs> you got. Well, gentlemen, thank you both thank for you. being here again, right? And everybody, you. hopefully, you're going to go out and buy this book, all yeah. right? Yeah, uh, this is Fred McNeil. You've been watching QAC TV, okay? Papa's World, and we've taken a look at a wonderful children's book called Our Wild Place. Now, this place isn't so wild. But we hope you continue watching and give us any ideas of authors, of books, or something you'd like to hear on Popper's World. This is Fred McNeil. Thank you very much for joining us. My time's up. Thank you for your time, and we're going to see you next time.